The Sun in Libra and Pluto in Capricorn square off for the very last time between Saturday, October 19th and Thursday, October 24th. Expect intense emotions, obsessions, fears, and power struggles. Let's take a closer look and break it down for all 12 signs. My name is Anastasia, I'm a traditional Western astrologer specializing in natal relationship and predictive readings. If you enjoy my work, please show your support by leaving a like, a comment, subscribing, pressing that notification bell, watch another one of my, my videos, or say thank you by buying me a coffee, a tea, croissant. Thank you for that. Um, before we dive in, if you're looking for personal guidance, you'd like me to answer questions you have, you have deep, burning, passionate questions that require looking at your natal chart, book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. I specialize in relationship consultations, looking at compatibility, natal chart readings, predictive readings, I can help you choose a date for your wedding, and more that refer to my website. Additionally, on my Side, you can find my beautiful 2025 astrology planner. I poured a lot of love into this. It contains 223 pages filled with insights, journaling pages, full moons, new moons, lots of space to write your to-do list, lots of space to set intentions and guides, dates that are good for love, dates that are challenging, lucky dates, everything you need to help you face the year straight on, head on, and maximize it as much as you can. Additionally, on my website, you can find candles and oils to create. I'd like to highlight my sunlight in a jar three candle. We are currently in Libra season. The sun is in its fall in Libra. The sun is in its detriment in Aquarius. The sun doesn't particularly love the colder, the darker time of the year here in the Northern Hemisphere. So if you're looking for some worth, warmth and self-worth as well, you want to bring more confidence, more charm, light, passion into your life, highly recommend my Sunlight in a Jar 3 candle or Sunlight in a Jar 2 candle. This one can help you find inspiration, recognition, and confidence. It's beautiful for asking people for support, for starting new projects. And astrologically, this is the best for those born with their sun in Libra or sun in Aquarius. Your natal sun conjoins squares opposes Saturn. If it is in the 6th, 8th, or 12th houses, those are my main recommendations. Also highly, highly recommend this for any Leo rising, Aries, or Sagittarius rising too, because then it's aligned with your fiery nature. So let's talk about the Sun in a square with Pluto. Like I said, this is the final square between the Sun in Libra and Pluto in Capricorn. Pluto is about to leave Capricorn on November 19th and will not come back to it in our lifetime. So it's the final battle royale between the Sun in relationship-oriented, idealistic, social Libra and Pluto in structured, conservative, traditional Capricorn. The exact aspect occurs at 10 at 10 15 a.m eastern time so adjust for your time zone on tuesday october 22nd but it takes three days before to build three days after for it to dissipate you may notice this energy sort of start to fall off later in the day on tuesday already because the sun enters scorpio shortly after and so the mood shifts the square occurs at 29 degrees 40 minutes libra and capricorn which means it will affect you the most if you have planets between 26 29 degrees cardinal signs which are of course aries libra capricorn and cancer so check your charts to see whether you have planets in those degrees um this on a level is like the final hooray from Pluto, your final opportunity to transform, release, shed the old, right? You can think of the Sun and Pluto together as like the square. The square is a battle, right? Square is like a tense aspect where the two are facing off with one another. And the Sun represents the king energy. It's the royal energy. It's it's the perfect image, the ideal of something you're aspiring towards. And so in Libra, it could be the perfect relationship, right? Like Libras often have this image of like everything is perfect, everything is lovely, everything is like rosy, 
r rosy dozy <laughs> i don't know if that's a thing but like like the sun is that ideal desire while pluto is the lord of the underworld it's like the king facing off with hades and hades is like here is the truth about you here is the shadow side here is the dark emotion how are you going to deal with it so this energy this this transit reveals things buried underneath it makes us face our shadows it reveals fears it reveals obsessions it sort of like pokes pokes holes in that perfect image and through the process of poking holes and being more realistic and like facing shadows you can actually transform and find a better version versus that idealized version that maybe initially you envisioned right and this applies to relationships you may notice some kind of um, power struggles in relationships let's say a partner says something to you and it upsets you and it reminds you or like it, it triggers you right and it makes you be all defensive and and like angry and it's hard to understand why because like like pluto just just like churns and pokes and transforms and usually it's slow but when it squares the sun it might be like a bit of an eruption so something comes out and you realize that there is a deeply rooted fear or deeply, deeply rooted wound that you're working on healing. And of course, this could be your opportunity to heal. This could be your chance to lean into astrology, spirituality, ask someone for help, lean into therapy, right? Uh, the goal is to gain consciousness of the situation, to understand why you're feeling triggered, what's affecting you so you can release the energy you can like or or like you know see it for who you are and and kind of accept it i'm thinking i'm thinking a little bit of like the movie tully i don't know if you've seen it i think it's tully it's the one with charlize theron where she is a mother of like three children i think and there's a nanny and sort of for some reason it makes me think of like the final scene in that movie you may notice not just, you know, you may definitely notice power struggles. You may notice a stronger desire for something, some kind of obsessive controlling tendencies that maybe reveal as well what is outdated. A conflict with someone, like your child tells you something and you react to it with like a lot of frustration, right? And then realize once again, maybe your child is treating you like you were treated as a child. And so it like kind of once again brings up all of these, all of these difficult feelings. And the question is like, how do you deal with it? Do you face it? Do you address it? Do you run away from it? The answer is of course to face it and try to work through it. So let's take a look at the 12 rising signs. If you're looking for personal guidance, you have questions that I would be able to answer in a one-on-one -on -one setting. If you want me to look at your chart, book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. If you are in Aries rising, the sun in your seventh house squares Pluto in the 10th. And here you're looking at the house of relationships, the ideal of a relationship versus, um, versus professional aspirations it could be like what you perceive a perfect relationship being versus what real life is right like the sun in the seventh is like i want to have this relationship that is magical that is perfect that is ideal and the square to pluto in the tenth could reveal that it's not quite what you want it to be right it can reveal some sort of shadows it can also reveal, it can bring up some kind of like tendencies around work that are actually unhealthy. Like let's say Pluto in the 10th could be your tendency to like work really hard or really want control and power and like realizing how your professional desires or even your like desire for status and recognition and maybe some kind of like beliefs around work affect your your relationship or even honestly with pluto in the 10th it could be your 10th house is your social life on some level it's like your public life right it's what people think of you 
So Sun in the seventh square, Pluto in the tenth could reveal a need to let go of the people pleasing tendencies, desire for people to approve of you and maybe like set that aside. And also I can see some kind of like important transformations that need to happen with authority figures. Maybe you need to stand up to an authority figure. Maybe you need to let go of a job. Maybe you need to transform something in your job so that your relationship feels better. Please share how this resonates. If you're looking for more, book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. For Taurus rising, the sun in the sixth house will square Pluto in the ninth. And here you're dealing with shadows and power struggles with teachers, with mentors. You're dealing with some kind of ideological crisis. You're addressing your beliefs and perhaps realizing how some of the beliefs are toxic for you or not healthy for your health, not healthy for your well-being. Um, Pluto in the ninth might be some kind of like obsessive tendency to, uh, I don't know, control the final outcome of a project. And then you realize how it's actually like bad for your relationship with colleagues. Or Pluto in the ninth might be like another belief that maybe affects your health somehow so like here you're examining examining what what you believe in you're maybe also dealing with some kind of power struggles with colleagues or teachers or mentors and addressing and i think letting go of like any outdated unhealthy beliefs that you should have shed perhaps a long time ago Share how this resonates. If you're looking for more, book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. For Gemini rising, the sun in the fifth house squares Pluto in the eighth. This could, this could be a question of how much do you rely on other people? How much do you let other people get involved in your life? and what needs to transform in your relationships with other people what needs to transform around finances so that you can have more freedom and more ability to enjoy life right the sun in the fifth represents ideals around pleasure ideals around romance ideals around parenthood and so the square to pluto in the eighth might also reveal that like you might be too controlling in some of those areas. You might be too dependent on the approval of other people. You might be too accommodating when it comes to finances or resources of your partner. So like having to having to talk about these uncomfortable things, like square Pluto in the eighth can be, you know, some kind of sudden situation, some type of like crisis in a relationship or a financial crisis that sort of takes you off guard. So of course, you know, pay attention to the emotions that come up because I can see this as like, you know, you're you're going through like a financial situation where like your bill goes up by $5, but it like upsets you so much and it really like takes you out of your peaceful mode. And then perhaps there are opportunities to examine what is this $5 increase of the bill actually representing for you because it could be about some kind of like lack mentality or fears or like some kind of deeper seated issue please share how this resonates if you're looking for a personal reading book one at anastasiadoesastrology.com and pick up my 2025 planner it's on sale it's beautiful and it will make your year much better if you are the lovely cancer rising the sun in the fourth house will square pluto in the seventh and you're dealing with tension between your house of home family and living situation and your house of relationships so a couple of ways this can play out right there might be there might be an old wound an old childhood wound that is impacting your relationship there might be some kind of tension with your partner's family or tension between your partner and your family that needs to be addressed some kind of drama that's coming up where like maybe like honestly even a partner maybe is going through some kind of difficult time and them going through a difficult time is testing your relationship opportunities for healing are possible here opportunities for sort of transformation there might also be a chance to examine your relationship with family and examine how much you're letting them 
get involved in your romantic relationship you know like what needs to change in your living situation what needs to change in your romantic relationship what needs to change in your dynamic with your family what needs to change in terms of your relationship with your childhood and like things you have grown up believing that are not healthy and not supportive of your romantic relationship and if you're single maybe it's also this like opportunity to uh, move on your own or heal a childhood wound or talk to a family member to make sure they're not affecting they're not trying to like impact i guess your understanding of relationships if you're looking for more book a reading at anastasiadoesastrology.com and pick up my 2025 astrology planner the link is down below and i ship it to most countries 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 i don't know <laughs> it's just like a brain fog countries if you are the lovely Leo rising, the sun in the third house squares Pluto in the sixth. And this might be like a crisis around health, some type of like, you know, work, like you've been working so hard with the sun in the third, you've been trying to maintain balance, you've been facilitating, you've been compromising, maybe making sure your, you know colleagues get along your work gets done your business is on top of things maybe you've been dealing with community and the square to pluto in the sixth there might be like some kind of glitch like a little thing that's like throwing you off there might be a conflict with a colleague like a colleague or even with a sibling some kind of power struggle that comes up and that ultimately asks you to talk about it honestly i can see this as like a need to discuss things Maybe also a need to address your schedule and release something that doesn't serve you because you're not supposed to kill yourself at your job. I think Pluto in the sixth house is ultimately trying to teach you to have a better, healthier relationship to work and with two people you work with. If you're looking for more, book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. Pick up my planner on there or say hi down below. If you are the lovely Virgo rising, the sun in the second house will square Pluto in the fifth. And this feels like a very like con conflicty, difficult power struggles around money. You know, sun in the second, square Pluto in the fifth. A partner maybe overspends. You were planning to go on vacation and you found out that they have actually spent a bunch of money and so you don't have um enough to travel together there may be might be some kind of disagreements around relationships disagreements about children disagreements about parenthood you might also be dealing with some kind of um even like power struggle with a child right like some kind of a tendency to be like very understanding very forgiving very accommodating very generous with your child and maybe Pluto in the fifth house represents like a need for change in that realm. Pluto in the fifth can also reveal any sort of jealousy, uh, desire for control, some kind of like obsessive tendency you have, like where are you trying to be a little bit too rigid and controlling that will need to be released and creative battles. Like I think if you are a creative individual and you're involved in some kind of like group project, um this could also bring tensions around that please share how it resonates if you're looking for more book a reading at anastasiadoesastrology.com i'd be happy to talk about your year coming up your natal chart your relationship and more i keep wanting to move this okay <laughs> i feel like it's not aesthetically pleasing to me for the lovely Libra rising, the sun in the first house squares Pluto in the fourth. And you're having to deal with ghosts from the past coming and affecting your personal energy. Pluto in the fourth could be a family conflict, a family drama, knocking on your door and distracting you and taking you off course. It could be a fear connected to the past it could be a childhood wound that becomes more apparent lots of opportunities for healing lots of opportunities for like transformation you know you always have control over your own responses over your reactions so the sun in the first square pluto in the fourth is like i think asking you to uh, 
embrace all parts of yourself to accept what happened in the past and to figure out how you can deal with things with more power and like how can you you know like set better boundaries and heal things and maybe move on as much as you can if you're looking for more book a reading at anastasia does astrology.com for the lovely scorpio rising the sun in the 12th house squares pluto in the third and here i'm thinking some kind of self-defeating tendency some kind of people pleasing tendency needs to be addressed square to pluto in the third might bring up um, a challenging conversation a sibling a family member going through some kind of difficult time maybe people in the family trying to control you or trying to get like involved with you and trying to uh, kind of get on your list uh, attack attack you somehow but also like maybe just even being needy or saying something that is triggering to you i feel like trigger is a big word for the sun square pluto it's like something comes out seemingly out of nowhere and it like throws you off and so the sun in the 12th as the sun in the 12th does can illuminate something hidden something important and encourage you to transform right like it might encourage you to address a self-defeating habit address and this self-defeating habit might be connected to the situation that's arising, right? Like maybe your self-defeating habit is saying yes to uh, family because you feel like family is the most important thing. And so what can you do to value family but value yourself also? Please share how this resonates. If you're looking for more, book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. Pick up an astrology planner on there. It is beautiful. For the lovely Sagittarius risings, the sun in the 11th house squares Pluto in the second house. And this feels like some kind of battles with friends, maybe miscommunications, maybe disagreements, maybe power struggles. Pluto in the second represents differences in values. It might represent finances. Maybe you have a friend who borrowed money and hasn't paid you back. Maybe you have a friend who is a bit of a frenemy and likes to say things that comes, you know, they present it as like they're trying to help you, but in reality it feels like they're poking at you. So having to address friendships, finances, beliefs around those things, beliefs around, you know, um, what true friendships are, questions of self-worth might be coming up too around this time. And maybe even opportunities to like examine your financial protocols, right? Because it's not necessarily about other people, but it could also be about your maybe tendency to spend too much. And then you find yourself in a position where you don't have enough saved up for some kind of bigger project. Please share how this resonates. If you're looking for more, book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. For the beautiful Capricorn rising, the sun in the 10th house squares Pluto in the first. And so you've been having sun Pluto squares around September, October for the last 16 years, right? And so this one is the last one. Here we're looking at the sun in the 10th and the area of career and sort of ideal of what your public image should be and your social standing should be in a square to Pluto in the first and perhaps Pluto in the first reveals some type of like fears, limitations, um, obsessions, control issues, even wounds that you haven't processed. And so like, you know, the sun square Pluto, something might happen that like triggers you and it affects your day at work. It affects your interaction with boss. Um, you might feel like someone is attacking you as well. And so, so I think there's a few opportunities here. There's an opportunity to examine, examine your fears and examine how you are second guessing yourself or doubting yourself and maybe opportunities to like address any tensions, any shadows with people shadows or disagreements or power struggles with people in like authority or 
or people in your life that are somehow controlling and limiting you. I think it's like this is the final basically chance for you to like speak up, assert yourself, express your power um, and maybe let something go, right? Like this could be an issue you've been dealing with for the last 10 years that is coming to a close. If you're looking for more, book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. Pick up my 2025 astrology planner. Get a candle. There's lots of beautiful things on there. If you are the lovely Aquarius rising, the sun in the ninth house squares Pluto in the twelfth. Square to Pluto in the twelfth might reveal some type of um, self-defeating tendency, some type of bad habit, some type of, type of like fear a wound from the past you're you're like maybe you know like something you feel bad something you maybe blame yourself for like 12th house is always these things that are lurking in our blind spot and be because it's squaring the sun in the ninth it might show up it might somehow like affect your desire to travel your desire to get away your desire to teach your desire to learn your desire to become a lawyer or um, a writer even potentially so like like I to me this things this feels like some type of a need to become more of a friend to yourself and maybe examine your fears and examine things that are holding you back like let's say with the sun in the ninth house you're really trying to become a teacher or you're trying to become a writer but like you're doubting yourself or you're remembering something your father used to tell you or your teacher used to tell you so this transit could offer a chance to let go of that and welcome a new belief even if it starts slow just plant the seed if you're looking for more book a reading at anastasiasastrology.com i'd be happy to talk about your year coming up your natal chart or your relationship for the lovely Pisces rising, the sun in the 8th house squares Pluto in the 11th. And you might be dealing with some kind of power struggles with friends. Some type of tensions between your dreams and your debts or resources you have available. Um, the sun in the 8th wants to work with other people, wants to kind of get along and collaborate and have like you know mutually respectful relationships and square pluto in the 11th might honestly come come out as like a friend stirring trouble and creating drama and saying things that are triggering or passive aggressive or like straight up hurtful and so if some kind of tension arises around this time i would recommend you face it straight on I would recommend you talk about it and it could be a chance to examine which friendships are authentic, which friendships are worth keeping in your life and which ones are not. And similarly, you know, the square to Pluto in the 11th might bring up challenges around your dreams, your goals, your, your desires, and also potentially encourage you to examine which one of them are realistic and which one of them you need to commit to versus which one of them which ones of them are like pipe dreams and need to be released. If you're looking for more, book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope you're having a happy October and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.